So it was from the observation that when you tighten <coughs> an LGA retention bracket, you'll have to look closely to see it though, there's actually a lot of pressure on the CPU and it moves significantly as you lower the retention arms. So I figured, you know, we're probably just not applying enough pressure. If we'd found a way to tighten the heat sink down enough, I think we could have pulled it off, <coughs> but we didn't do that. So now we need a new way to mount our coolers. Kingston KC310 series SSDs feature firmware-based power loss protection, massive capacities up to 960 gigs, and not to mention they perform well enough that we're using them in our 24 SSD server with that massive RAID array. So click right here to learn more. Hey, there we go. All right, we're back in business. Business of breakage. It's really great that Intel provisions, uh, you know, these emergency mounting mechanisms into their socket designs. <laughs> they think of everything. I think we're on. Look at that. Hey, there you go. She's posting with two CPUs installed. Let's get that other cooler on. Okay, so we're booted into Windows. It looks like all the hardware is working. Ooh, we haven't put in the second Titan X yet, but there's time, there's time for that. I think we have to close out this video though, so we'll finish up with just a validation that everything's in here. So we can see the maximum speed of our CPUs, how many sockets, how many cores and threads we have. Stay tuned, guys. We're going to benchmark this thing. We want to check out power consumption. want to see if we can crush some leaderboards. Um, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, like this video. Now, for you guys, it won't really seem like we've made a ton of progress since last week. It has been a full week since I've even been able to touch this. But actually, I've aside from cleaning up the desk area here, I have been hard at work on trying to get this thing working. Now you can see it's working now, but the issue is that this motherboard is really designed for server use, not workstation use. And in spite of mine and Supermicro's best efforts to dink around with a bazillion different BIOS settings and all of that stuff, we got one card going, but we couldn't get two. And I really wanted two Titan X's in here. Not for SLI or gaming or anything, but for more compute performance, more of that CUDA. So I have been waiting for two things to arrive. Number one is ASUS's, whatever this thing is, Z10PE-D16. This is an ASUS dual socket board as well as the dual 10 gigabit NIC that I'm going to need since that board doesn't have two 10 gigabit LAN ports on board. The other thing I thought I needed is these Noctua narrow mounting brackets, but uh, I don't think that board actually uses the narrow ILM, so I may not actually need these anymore. My zip ties were a great solution anyway. I am so excited. Actually, Supermicro has sent an additional board as well. They sent one of their workstation ones. So we're still not locked into using this one, especially because their workstation one does have the LAN ports we need, which means I can reuse that card somewhere else. But, you know, JJ was all up in my business on Twitter being like, yo, Linus, you should really be using ASUS for everything. So I, uh, I figured I might as well at least give them a chance. So here it is, my friends. The unboxing experience. So many CDs. And that, my friends, is the board itself. So as I suspected, it does not use the narrow ILM. So that was all for nothing, potentially. And there we go. Still got 16 memory slots. Still got two LGA 2011 3 sockets. It still uses 24 pin. 8 pin, 8 pin, and whoa, what's that? We've got an additional 4 pin power down here. So that is three CPU power connectors. Pretty fantastic. We've got six SATA ports, another four down here. We've got whatever the devil all this stuff is. USB 3 on a front panel header. We've got an M.2 socket, which is pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and get this baby, uh, get this baby rigged up, maybe with proper mounting hardware this time. 
I, I know, right? Well, people keep complaining that I'm not doing it properly. So this time, I'm going to do it properly. They're going to end up with a boring video. And, and no one's going to be happy. Except maybe Asus to not see their hardware being mistreated. Okay. Now here's something, you know, many of you haters probably aren't noticing, but go back and look for it. Me grounding myself out while I'm working. I actually do do it. I kill surprisingly little hardware. I almost kill a lot of hardware. Eight. Okay. It just counts down. It, it, yeah, here it's here. It just counts down the entire range of postcodes that it can display. This is not fair, like f why? Okay. Hey. Um, well, gee, man, I have had, I have had better. I went through hell with that super micro board and I was just hoping Asus quality, man, I'm gonna plug everything in and it's gonna be like, rocking out and I am I'm in a super sad state right now do you need sort of the full update uh, yeah I, I, I'm not aware of any of this I mean I guess it's something that you were uh, working on with with Roger yeah if you can at least let, let me know what, what board you have I can see what insight I can give you and then hopefully we can uh, help, help get things moving forward okay uh, in consumer based boards because there's a much higher likelihood that consumers are utilizing higher end cards and newer cards that have uh, GOP and utilization policy support uh, we have an auto Okay, so we actually got it to post and we didn't get that error with the network card in the bottom PCI Express 16x slot, but we ran into a new thing where we couldn't see any of our boot devices. So we pulled that out and we're trying again now. So one way or another, I'm not getting this video out on Sunday, am I? Uh, uh, it's, it's, it still might be a possibility. It might be a possibility, it depends. I, can, I, I might be able to actually get a hold of them today. Uh, it just depends on if I can get a hold of our PM team to, to get them or to get me request that. So unfortunately, Asus's BIOS team was not available to work on a custom BIOS for me on the weekend. So we're going to have to settle for one Titan X, but I don't want to leave you guys hanging any longer. So we are going to run some rudimentary benchmarks with our two 2699 V3s. So our 36 cores, our 128 gigs of RAM and a single Titan X graphics card. So we're going to kick things off. And one of the things that I want to look at, well, a number of things I want to look at is power consumption temps now that we have proper coolers on them i want to see what kind of turboing we get out of uh, something like a gaming workload and of course i want to see dat cinebench number check this out idle power consumption is under a hundred watts from the wall closer to 90 watts this is with an 80 plus platinum efficiency power supply but still that means it's actually only consuming somewhere in the neighborhood of 85 watts at idle. Of course, the story is going to change somewhat under load, so let's go ahead and see how much we can actually draw here. So at idle, the CPU was sitting at about 1.2 gigahertz. Now it's turboing up to 2.6 when we're hitting it with a full load. So you can see we've started a stability test here in IDA64, and our CPU usage is sitting in the neighborhood of 98 to probably 100 by the time it refreshes again percent and check that out that is with just the cpus working that's the kind of power consumption we'd expect to see from a gaming rig including graphics cards but these are not cpus for the faint of heart i think i saw that touch 500 watts just hitting the cpus so let's go ahead and let's add system memory does it let me change the stress test mid-flight Ooh, it really doesn't like that. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see. Okay, so memory usage is closing in at 100% now, and you can see that thanks to the efficiency of the DDR4 modules from Kingston that we're using, we're still hovering around that 500 watt mark, but now we're consistently or much more frequently around that 500 watt mark. Now we're gonna throw GPU into the mix and see what happens. So now with the GPU running, we're actually seeing sustained loads in the high 600s, and I've even seen peaks at around 700 watts. But what's cool is we're still running at our max turbo frequency, 
Uh, CPU temps are still very much under control in the low 60s to high 50s range, in spite of the fact that the air is noticeably warmer in a sphere around this open test bench computer. So this is good news. It means everything's stable, and we can proceed with the rest of our benchmarks. Next up is everyone's favorite multi-core CPU benchmark, Cinebench R15. Let's go ahead and run that bad boy. So that is what it looks like to see 72 threads ripping through Cinebench. I have never seen anything quite like it. Wow. <laughs> so that's a score of 3981 in Cinebench R15. So for perspective, that's what a 12-core Xeon at 2.66 gigahertz is capable of. And uh, we completely left that in the dust by more than 3x. Pretty mark. I wasn't expecting to get like powerhouse amazing results thanks to the low clock speed of the CPU and the fact that we're only running one GPU, so it's not exactly optimized for it. But I was expecting a little bit better on the physics score. That's actually significantly lower than you can do on a 4770K, showing that while it is a multi-threaded test, it can't handle 72 threads. Not so much. So for our last trick, we're going to try and top the real bench, so that's ASUS's ROG benchmark scoreboard without an ROG motherboard. I mean, it's still an ASUS motherboard. I'm sure they won't be too upset about it. But, oh, I want to be able to have a look at how our multi-threaded CPU is helping us during this benchmark. So let's get that baby open. So it looks like we're using, like, one of our threads. Maybe two? Two? Maybe two threads? I have no idea if that image editing score is any good, but the encoding benchmark is running and we're finally getting some CPU utilization. Only 50% max so far. Oh, 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 here we go, here we go. Okay, so our final test is heavy multitasking, and once again, I am not getting necessarily the results I was hoping for. We have not yet, we have not yet broken our second C Oh yeah, there it is, yes! So our score was not that great. System score, 91,000-ish, which puts us actually pretty far down the leaderboard. Something about the dual socketness is not appreciated by a lot of the benchmarks that we've been playing around with here, but this is something that we kind of expected and I think ties pretty well into the conclusion for this video. So I'm actually gonna go, I'm gonna stand next to it here. This kind of a system is not for desktop use. We know this. And it's, I had a lot of people criticizing me on social media about the fact that we're even running Windows on it because this is the kind of thing that if you're doing some kind of serious number crunching that for whatever reason doesn't benefit from GPU, you really need CPU for it for some reason. That's what this is for and it's becoming more and more of a niche use case scenario in a lot of cases something like Linux might be better for those particular workloads. But what people don't know is what we're actually doing with this system. And what we'll be doing with it is not going to be general usage, where we've demonstrated that you probably shouldn't have 36 cores and 72 threads. What we'll be doing with it is we'll be running a specialized piece of software. Right now, the front runner is Sorensen Squeeze Server um, to significantly reduce the output times of our videos so that we can turn them around much more quickly, as well as actually transcode footage upon ingesting off of our cameras so that it's easier for our PCs to work with while we're editing the videos, creating something called a proxy. So that is what this system is for, and for that, it will be excellent. So you guys are going to want to stay tuned where we'll show well, it hooked up to the 10 gigabit network. We're going to show its performance rendering videos over the network once we've actually got the software we're using finalized, and that is going to be a sight to behold, even if running desktop-grade benchmarks with CPUs that are running at, well, not that high clock speeds wasn't that impressive today. So thanks for watching, guys. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you thought it sucked. Leave a comment, preferably at the link to our forum in the video description if you want to discuss it. Also linked in the video description, you can buy a cool t-shirt like this one, although this particular one is over on Teespring. So you're going to want to uh, go ahead and check out the special link in order to get one of our first campaign Linus Tech Tip shirts. Also linked in the video description, you can change your Amazon bookmark to one with our affiliate code, and I think that pretty much wraps it up. Thanks again for watching, and as always, don't forget to subscribe. Wait, that's a like. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. It's Saturday. I shouldn't even be working. I'm not even supposed to be at work today. 
three internet points, if you know the reference. Or I'm not even supposed to be here. I didn't even get it right. Whatever. Thank <laughs> you.